Okay, it's 6630. We have a quorum. We'll call the planning board. You need to order. And first up for general information is who Bill. Bill Napa. Evening. How's everybody tonight? So, um, I guess, I guess I'm just, just going to try to make this as quick and dirty as, as I can, because I know we've had a lot of go back and forth about, about this master sperm sign, sign. Um, and, and I just, just want to clarify any questions that there may be, so, so we can, can move forward to the actual meeting for the, uh, for the zoning. Um, is, is there any, any questions, or does anyone have any issues with what we're, we're proposing? Just give me the street address first. Um, 335 Russell Street. It's the tenant space next to the Orange Theory. Next to where? Orange Theory in the... Uh, it's the Manny's the, building. Yeah. And I guess... Orange uh, Theory is a fitness club that is oh, in oh, one okay. part of it. And Mattress Firm is moving from the main mall to uh, this outbuilding. Where used to be Manny's over there. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I and I guess the the running issue at the moment is that Orange Theory was um, granted um, more signage than they were allowed, um, which has kind of put us for Mattress Firm in a in a kind of a pickle. Um, so we're trying to at least get the front sign. Um, you know, we would really like the back sign as well, but I understand that that puts us way over the, the square footage. So, so I've been thinking, thinking about, about it a little, little bit. bit. The, the, the bylaw allows, allows each tenant in, in a multi-tenant multi building, building to have 40, 40 square feet of signage. signage. Correct. Correct. The fact, the fact that, that Mattress Firm got, got three times that. that you mean Orange, orange theory. theory. Orange Theory yeah. got, got three times that. that is between them and the ZBA. Okay. Uh, I don't think that disqualifies you from having your 40 square feet. Okay, that's good. Um, and we have allowed the 40 square feet to be divided. Correct. I understand from talking to someone else in the food chain, uh, yep. they want two 40 square foot signs. Correct. And where they're not here tonight, then it gives me the option to speak for them. And if we're going to, you know, a, a 20 square foot sign on each side of that building is going to be a postage stamp. It's, it's not going to do anything. Um, in, in my opinion, um, you know, if, if we can get the 40 square foot on the front, that's what I would go for, you know, in my opinion. You, if you will, you're allowed one for, you're allowed 40 square feet, be it split between one sign or Two. three or four signs. So if you want one 40 square foot sign that's not internally illuminated, that is fine. Okay, and that's and that's where the other question comes in. They're, they want to have it halo lit, which I believe in one of the emails said that that was okay, but halo lit is still an internally illuminated sign. It's just the LEDs are facing the back rather than the front. And I just want to make sure that everyone understands that so later on down in the process it doesn't get brought up and say well hey wait a minute this is an internally illuminated sign the, the, the sign the letters have to cannot be translucent they have to be solid right okay but the led components are still internally housed in the sign but they shine toward the background correct and the letters are halo lit so that they're solid colored exactly we were we have been allowing that because that we've been allowing that. Okay. Then that works for me. Okay. So the one thing I'll say every time that someone comes in and talks about signage and variances, um, Massachusetts variance law is very restrictive. And frankly, you don't have any business asking for a variance. Okay. It goes to a different board, and they take a somewhat different view of it. But okay. you don't have any hardship there. That Correct. Is unlike uh, what is experienced by others, and um, so I just I just pass that along for what it's worth. Okay. Anything else? So I've circulated the sign design several times. Um, 
And um, as long as it's under less than 40 foot, less than 40 square feet, I don't think we have any problem with it. So then do we still need to go for a variance or can we just go ahead and apply for the permit? If and you want to apply for a permit for one 40 square, square foot sign, you can yep. go ahead. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the sign design up to 40 square feet. Okay. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 This is from Mattress Firm at 335 Perfect. Russell. Yes. Right, Phil? Okay. Yep. Okay. And that is halo lit with um, uh, opaque letters. Correct. Okay. Now, will I follow up with Didi on the next step as far as the application? Yeah, what, what will happen is I will give a little simple uh, email letter to the building inspector. Okay. That we approve just what, just what the motion Mr. Dwyer has made. Yeah. And then we should be all set. That should take oh. a few days to get to them. Awesome. Really appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. Okay. And Mr. Foreman is up next. Yes, sir. I, I don't think you can see me. My, my phone isn't working right here. Um, but... Um, this is in reference to the monument style sign for Hopkins Academy. Um, I think Tommy Quinlan might have sent you the, the picture. He did send the picture, but it just arrived this afternoon. So okay. I did forward it to everybody, but not necessarily everyone has had a chance to see it yet. I have not seen it, no. All right. Well, it's a... It's a... It's a brick sign to match the uh, match the high school, um, probably nine feet long, six feet high, with a uh, brick pillars on the left and the right, and and a brick base, and a um, sign itself uh, will be. Um, it's going to say Granby High School. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Really, yeah. they're moving to Hadley, huh? Well, it was I, a, uh, it was a good. They got a good price on it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going by Granby High School, and I happened to see it, so I took a picture. But that's a here's, similar here's, design. Here's the problem I got: the sign looks better than the high school. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, and Granby it does. <laughs> well, but um. The sign itself, which which will be uh, in the monument itself, um, is going to be like the one um, "Welcome to Hadley" coming off the bridge. That wood sign, "Welcome to Hadley, Massachusetts." You guys must have seen that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and that's the design. You know, I want to. Um, I want to keep it you know, the same type of sign as, as welcome to Hadley, you know, it'll just say Hopkins Academy, Hadley mass or, or Hopkins Academy. Is it, is it going to be lit at night, Eddie? Um, I don't know. Um, if I did, um, put some lighting, it'll be, la, um, solar. So in other words, if you put solar in, it'll be lit all night long. Yeah, or, you know, until it runs out, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I really haven't thought much about that, but, uh, um, you know, I thought some nice, you know, uh, I'm going to landscape it a little bit also, you know, similar to that Granby, but, uh, you know, my own design, so to speak. But... Um, well, who, who are you representing? I mean, who, who authorized you to come before us? Uh, well. You know, I just took it upon myself. Uh, I thought that Hopkins Academy, uh, you know, being uh, a, a um, historic high school in my mind, right. should have a sign like that. So I just, uh, I just did it on, on my own. At 
Uh, uh, actually, you know, I started a couple of years ago um, with the idea and um, it didn't go anywhere. So I tried again. And um, I just think that, you know, our school needs that. Um, you know, I was fortunate to get a grant. And uh, so I decided, it would, you know, it'd be a nice, uh, aesthetically, it'll match the high school. So how big did you say it was? Nine by what? Probably six. nine feet um, left to right and then six feet high. 54 square feet. Mm -hmm. That's including the brick monuments? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. And the sign will go in. If you can see that Granby High School sign, you know, where it says Granby High School, obviously the, that's where the Hopkins Academy will go, but it won't be, um, I don't know what that sign is made out of, but uh, ours is going to be wood or, or whatever they used, you know, for the Welcome to Hadley sign. Uh, I think I would be <clears throat> more comfortable if we had uh, some indication of support from the school, uh, whether it's the superintendent or maybe the school committee would be the better one well, to the, in the, you know, the, the design and the placement. Well, the school is in the loop. You know, I, I went through Bar uh, Brian Breck uh, last year, you know, and he proposed it to the trustees. Who's Brian Breck? Brian Beck is the ex uh, principal, now the superintendent up in, um, I don't know, up north, some, somewhere maybe. But he was a high school principal for the last five years. I, I would think you'd need school committee approval to put that on the school, though. Ed, that's the only thing. Okay. You know, I mean, I don't think the planning board has anything against it. I think it's a nice looking sign. No. That's a great idea. <clears throat> but I think you'd need some kind of. Uh, formal approval to have that sign put up there that's all well, Ed, how, okay. how quickly did you want to start moving on this well you know i like to get it in before uh you know the ground freezes yeah that may so, not be, that may be any time by the spring by the way the winter's going yeah <laughs> yeah all right then I'll, uh i'll uh i'll speak to annie mckenzie and then we can go from there so when's the, the school committee meets what the last monday of the month I don't know. No, they've changed that. They're meeting Thursday this week. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, I'll call Annie tomorrow. Could, could we approve it subject to school committee approval? I, uh, well. Do we need a dimension I, drawing? I, I, that I think we goes? should wait until they have school committee approval so we don't look like we're jumping into jumping in front of them. I mean, I think a school committee oh, good point. I agree. Be, you know, I agree. a simple I agree. thing. Okay. You know, I don't think I don't think anybody's against that, Ed. I think it's a great. I think it looks nice. It's a great idea. Okay. All right. Then I'll uh, uh, I'll go to Annie and, and and they will go from there, and then I'll uh, um, I'll get back to you guys. Yeah. Our okay. next meeting is October six. October six. The okay. first Tuesday of October. All right. Very good. Okay. I Thanks, appreciate Ed, you. Very great idea. Okay. I well, long overdue in, in my mind, but uh, uh, I appreciate your your input and uh, and your suggestions. I appreciate your time. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank okay. you. Next up, Mr. Dwyer. Uh, Christopher Lee, although before we do that, uh, Christopher, are you with any of the other people? Your voice, you're muted, Chris. Yeah, I was trying to find the window. Uh, no, I'm not with anyone. I'm representing um, Philip Price, the homeowner at uh, 113 Middle. Okay. Um, I know that Ken is our scheduled appointment for uh, 645. And do you still have another meeting to go to, Ken? I actually just finished that. Oh, okay. Then, um, then maybe we can clear out some of the others and uh, then we'll have time to talk about definitions. I just wanted to be sure, sure we were. 
working with your schedule. You're 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 good. Okay. All good. Okay. Christopher Lee was next up. And I believe you were talking about a, an accessory apartment, and I forwarded the plans around earlier this week. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Um, What's the I address? Guess, would it be easier if I uh, shared my screen so everyone's looking at the, at the plans? Sure. Let me get that set up. What's the address again that we're talking about? Uh, it's 113 Middle Street. All oh, right. Okay. Phil Reed's old, the little red house kind of back, borders the back of uh, Hopkins Academy yeah. property. Yep. Kind yep. of uh, contemporary with glass and red. Yeah. You know. This is Reed's old house. I believe it's still the same family living there. I think I, I met, I think I met Miss Sarita a couple weeks ago. He was explaining some property lines to us. I went there going door to door when I was campaigning for this seat and uh, I was impressed by it. It was like a wall of books. It was a <laughs> library as you walked in. Okay, I've set it up for screen sharing. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, so as Bill said, we're we're looking to add an accessory apartment um, to one thirteen Middle Street. Um, we're looking to build this for uh, Philip's mother, uh, who currently lives up in Brattleboro, and is going to be spending more time uh, down here as she gets a little bit older. Um, so. We, we do know that we need to do an attached uh, accessory apartment in Hadley. And we're, we're essentially accomplishing that by creating a, uh, a sunroom. Uh, not, so more than a breezeway, we're actually going to do a full sunroom that is between the, that connects the ADU uh, and the existing structure. Um, so that's... One and then from a design standpoint, we are going to we are trying to match uh, the existing uh, the existing design of the house. So, following through with the the board and battens on there, trying to match the the modern architecture. Um, so, also looking at uh, casement windows. We're matching the trim. We're putting some of this skirting in under the windows. Um, so when we're finished with it, we're hoping that it uh, it, it is going to look like it's been there uh, forever. the The main question, so I'm, I'm interested to hear thoughts on that. We do, uh, I do want to point something out that came up as we did the survey on this property. Uh, the existing parking that has been used on this property for the last uh, the homeowner and, and even his father had said like 60 years is not on the property. It's on ha uh, town of Hadley property. Um, so I'm, I'm interested to hear what the, what the board's thoughts are on that. Cause I know that there's a parking requirement for the ADU and for the house. Um, but which, the parking to your, to, to your property. That's all. Well, so that was the, um, when, when speaking to the homeowner, we were, we're trying to figure out, is there a possibility of somehow adopting this, uh, as because it has been used for 50 years. Um, it, it's, it's, it's something that's existing and we're not going to be adding additional space. We're not going to be adding an additional car to this residence. Um, Bill's mom is, is going blind and can't drive. We can't give you permission to park on somebody else's property. We can only, um, give, you permission. We can only give you permission to park on your own. You're, you're parking at your own risk, but you've been taking a risk for 50 years. Okay, so does the town of um, so does the town of Hadley? Well, I'm assuming the town of Hadley is aware of this because they're doing. They just they're, they're putting the new access to the sports field right right on the left of this property. Um, and it wasn't it wasn't brought up then. Uh, does does Hadley have a process in which Phil could potentially purchase this land, um, or have it or have Hadley uh, gifted to them in some kind of like adverse possession, given the history of it being used? Well, whether or not it's adverse possession between you and your lawyers and the attorneys to decide. 
I don't know if it meets the requirements of adverse possession. That's out of our jurisdiction. Right. Uh, yeah. To get it, to buy it for the town of Hadley would probably require town meeting approval. Would the town sell you some of that? Probably not. It would it would probably meet quite a bit of opposition. Why wouldn't you want to just put put the parking on your own property? You've got a good sized front yard here. Um, we could. It, it's just it, it's a it's another expense expense to the project, um, and the the homeowners aren't they're not they don't need the extra spot. So basically, in going through the motions of creating the accessory apartment, we're kind of we expose the fact that their parking is not actually on their land. Um, so we're the the project that he wants to do is the accessory apartment. He doesn't necessarily want to create a new driveway. Well, like I said, the planning board cannot give you permission to park on somebody else's property. The parking must be on your own property. And as a planning board member, I can't approve the parking as you have it. You need to put it on your property. Okay. So you, you, we will need to show, uh, I believe it's at least three spaces. Correct. Right. Like you says, you can show the spaces. They, the law does not, I don't believe that the bylaw requires them to be paved or otherwise as long as you show the spaces. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so the other question I have on the parking, uh, there is obviously there's a large section of, um, of land that is owned by the city of Hadley between Middle Street and the actual property line. Um, in creating this new parking, uh, are we, are, are you going to want to see a new curb cut going through the sidewalk to bring it into full compliance or are we going to be, can we assume that we can continue to use his driveway, which comes up and accesses it, uh, the property through the side lot line? Like I said, the planning board cannot give you permission to park or access on that property. It has to be on your own. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not asking for the the parking. I'm, I'm asking for the access, you uh, take, which is you could take your curb cut and put an S turn in it onto your property. You don't need to put a whole new driveway, and you could just bring the bring the driveway in and put it at an angle onto your property, some kind of an S. That's okay, how you would want to do that? Yeah, that, that's that's what I was asking. Just knowing that it's it's unusual for a driveway to come in through a side lot line. Um, which it would be in this scenario. We wouldn't be coming traditionally uh, through the front, the front yard. Yeah, I don't think we would be approving that. Accessing through the, the side lot line? Yeah, that would, you know, I, we have at least one legally trained person on our board who would, would stop us from... We, we have approved, we do have a bylaw that allows for access across other than the frontage, but that's not the issue here. The issue is that you don't own the land. And um, I, um, yeah, we can't, we basically can't give you permission to, uh, to, do, to do anything except relocate your driveway. Now, if the select board and the DPW decide for whatever reasons they don't want to uh, move the curb cut, then um, then we'll get, have to work on what we have to work on. But um, but yeah, you're just not going to be able to come in that way for new construction. Okay, um, what was what is the section of the bylaw that allows access not through a front yard line that you that you mentioned? Uh, it's in one of the earlier sections. Um, I don't section four, I think four or five. I think that's applicable because he doesn't have a side yard that's accessible to the right of way. Right. Right. That's, that's true. Um, yeah, it really wouldn't apply to, to this, this location. Because your only lot line that touches the right of way is your frontage. So you've got to come through your frontage unless you work out an easement with one of your neighbors which is the town of hadley or the the neighbors on the right right yeah given okay. the circumstances if you did were able to negotiate an easement with the town that that would be different okay so an easement coming 
not necessarily ownership, but some kind of easement that extends past the traditional tree belt where we're allowing are already allowing driveways. Correct. Okay. And then we'd want to, you'd have to be very clear about whether the easement is to park or whether it's just to access parking that would be on entirely on your land. Would Correct. You, right. Yeah. Like you would come up and then turn right onto your land and park. Okay. Um, so that's that I, I, I understand that. So the question, the other question on the parking, um, is there is there any ability for us to request that we only create two spots rather than the additional spot for the ADU, given that the the mother who will be living here is is blind and does not drive? Well, to to no. explain our position, if we approve that to you, then then we don't have any leg to stand on. If you turn around and sell it to someone else who who maxes it out. So mm -hmm. we need to apply the requirements, no matter what your particular needs are. Okay. We, we are just approving for today. We're looking down the road for a possible sale. You'd need mm -hmm. the, all the parking spaces. You need to have available to put in the three parking spaces. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I understand. I, I just, some, some other um, towns make a, have the provisions and the bylaws to allow um, exemptions to the parking, but we, that, that's fine. It's understood. Um, so the other thing, I, I, I want to look back at the actual proposed structure and what we're looking to do here. Um, so obviously the existing house is in front of the uh, required setback. Um, we are hoping to continue the, we're, we want to build in line with the front of the house. So it's, it's continuous and it, it, it also looks like it's always been there. The, there's also a large grade change um, that comes out towards the back of the house, which we want to avoid trying to dig into. Um, does, and I think this would be completely in the planning board's realm as to how, how, are you, how will this be viewed in, as it's proposed. We, you cannot make a non-conforming structure more non-conforming. But if you build within the 43.65 foot setback and do not build it any closer than that, then you would be considered, at least from what prior um, building inspectors have said, it is not any more non-conforming. You're still basically staying with the original, for lack of a better term, non-conformance. It's no more, no worse. Okay. And the building inspectors at least uh, Tim Nyhart, what he was building in fact, I would assume Mr. Quinlan would be the same way, would be okay. Okay, excellent. Yeah, we weren't sure if adding this much additional uh, massing in front of it would be an issue, but we, we hoped it wouldn't. Well, uh, it's not really our call. Um, it is the building inspector's call. Uh, in other properties, where people were putting up a new building on the footprint of an old building that was otherwise too close to the road, uh, they have gone uh, for a variance from the ZBA. Yeah. And it has been allowed. In this case, you, you, you're, you have a, an excellent argument for it, but um, yeah. you know, we, it's not our call. We don't have that authority, but I, I would ask Mr. Quinlan that question, the building inspector, before you go any further. Okay. Um, it we, we, you wouldn't the planning board wouldn't comment on it matching the the character of the building to do it in this way that wouldn't be in your realm. Oh the, yeah, ma ma matching the character. I mean, it, it, the building looks fine. I don't think we're gonna have a problem with anything you want to okay. do. What you just need to be for the setback. That's a building a zoning enforcement officer, building inspector call. Okay. Okay. So I would be Jim, we're, we're treating this pretty much as the, uh, the special permit hearing. Uh, right. This, this, this the, is the neighbors are obviously going to be involved for the special permit hearing. Mm -hmm. Yes, they haven't been yeah. notified yeah, yet. This, we have not yes, sent yes, any but notes. This is not approval. We're just talking we're about make, it. We're, we're making, or evidently Christopher is making assumptions that the planning board says it's okay. Uh, I think, I, well, I, I think he's got the impression that it's not okay with us. Uh, well, correct. Or, or dubious. 
Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm not taking anything from this that you guys are saying this is the way it's going to be. I'm, I'm all ultimately it's your vote on what not moves forward. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm designing this to, to fit into the bylaw and, and your interpretation of it. And then what the neighbor's comments are, hopefully uh, the planning board will, will sift through as they see fit when we send notifications out. The other thing, Christopher, when you go to, west down the hill that's a uh, floodplain you may have to have a hearing with the conservation commission um let me get my bearings west towards the town of hadley land towards the uh, oh sorry this is south pool. toward the back of the lot okay um flood zone c yep Okay, and who do you, who would I be speaking to uh, to verify whether or not we'll need to go through them to get approval to build? So that'd be the Conservation Commission. You can contact. Uh, they yeah. have a on, they have a page at hadleyma.org, and I think the email is just conservation at hadleyma.org. Okay, Dennis Stone is the uh, what's her title, Bill? Uh, not quite sure, but she is the uh, staffer for the, uh, she only works part-time, but she does uh, answer the email routinely. Okay. Okay. Um, is there anything else on these plans that catches anyone's eye that we may, we, we should be dealing with? prior to formally requesting permission to do this. So Board of Health is not going to be involved because this is on the sewer. Yep. Or they may be involved, do they? No, not if it's on sewer. There's no septic permits required. Yep. Nothing else jumps out at us. Biggest thing is setbacks and coverage and uh, you 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 appear to be good with that. You're, you're the new building is less than nine hundred. The old the existing is going to be less than nine hundred. So, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for uh, pointing us in the right direction, and you'll be hopefully hearing back from us soon for a formal. This Hearing. There's a question here. I see the existing building you're listing at 813 square feet, but a two story. So is that yeah. 1600 square feet? Or yeah, it's, it's, he's just listing the footprint on that. Okay. It, it is larger than that. Okay. Just wanted to be sure. Okay. Yeah. And this technically the sunroom would be added into that. That will be part of the, uh, the primary residence uh, footprint and living area. Okay. Okay. So you know how to find us. And uh, when you're ready to apply, uh, <clears throat> just come on back and we'll get you set up. We are exploring doing public hearings by Zoom. And um, I guess that was a question I had. I know the last time we spoke, uh, it was unclear how you were organizing the, the, the hearings. If, if we apply to, for a special permit, will, will you hold that or will we have to do something in addition to to get that scheduled? If it's not controversial, we're going to try Zoom. If it turns out to there be a lot of uh, controversy over your public hearing and people can't attend or there's complaints or something like that, then we will postpone it till we can have live public hearings. And we don't know when that's going to be. Well, I'll be straight out honest with you. Okay, and controversy, will you, you'll determine, will you determine that based on how many people contact the planning board in response to our uh, notification? Basically that and how many come up to the public hearing and if there's complaints, well, we can get do this. If we can address the issues, okay. we will. If we can't address them for Zoom, 
then we will continue the public hearing till we can hold live. Okay, I see. So no matter what, we'll hold the hearing on Zoom and, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, I think today wants to go off. Come on, Joe. Come yeah. on. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. I will, I will, I will stay in touch. An important thing here is to contact your neighbors and let them know what you want to do yep. and get a feel for them. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. I know um, he, Phil's been in touch with the Allen, with the people next door. And then I guess the town of Hadley is going to be hearing from us about the parking. And um, I, we haven't contacted the people directly across the street oh, yet. Oh, but are everybody within 300 feet of your perimeter property line. So that was, those mm -hmm. people you should be talking to. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Okay. Thank you. Next, Mr. Dwyer. Uh, next is Mr. Abercrombie. Hello, everybody. Um, Hello. Thanks for um, inviting me to this meeting. I'm uh, trying to address... Uh, I live at 29 East Commons Drive, the development that's just off of East Street. And um, I live on the side that is uh, the back of our house faces Route 9, and it's directly across from Knight's Inn. Um, Knight's Inn has two uh, unusually bright and garish uh, lights on their parking lot which illuminate all the houses on our side of the development uh, at night until the morning. And I'm wondering if there's anything that can be done to uh, accommodate, uh, accommodate us not to have those shining in our windows at night. Um, I, have, uh, I have gone to meet the person at night's inn and to ask him about the lights, but I only got a sentence or two out uh, just to introduce myself and say I'm his neighbor. <clears throat> but he um, said, uh, this was about a month or so ago. Um, he said that um, he's talking with Eversource and that it's their lights and he's gonna ask them to do something about it, but he hasn't come to look and see what the problem is from my house. Um, Michael has seen it and talked to the owner of Knight's Inn, but this was about a month and a half ago or so, and nothing has been done. We haven't heard anything. So I'm asking if there is anything um, that can be done about these lights, which were obviously cleared uh, or cleared by bylaw or some kind of uh, official notice to be put in before this development was put in, obviously. And if there's anything that can be done if they don't rectify the situation. Uh, the lights more than uh, illuminate their parking lot. Um, it's way more than is needed for the parking lot and they're not standard lights. So they're pretty garish. So I'm asking if there's anything that can be done since they have been okayed years ago by this board um, to ask if it was a bylaw, if it was, I don't know all the possible ways that it could have been okayed and enacted, but to know if there's anything that we can do to change the situation. I don't recall, how long ago was that for site plan approval? Well, before um, the this, this senior housing went in. Yeah. Probably, I mean, that's, that was put in when, uh, what's his name? Tony uh, Pateras. Oh, yeah, Pateras owned it, yeah. That was, that's quite a while, that was a long time ago. I don't know if those lights were there when, when Mr. Patera owned it or not, if the Knights Inn put it in when they changed ownerships, I don't remember. Yeah. Well, what's this whole thing about waiting for Eversource? It's on private property. Why would Eversource have any say about those lights at all? I'm confused about that. Well, Me too. I, I'm not positive on this, but I mean, if they're on private property, Eversource may own the lights and 
the owner of the property essentially rents them from Eversource. Okay. However, the owner of the property still, I would, I believe, still has authority to tell Eversource to change the direction so that they're not facing towards these three commons. I've driven down, when this first came up, and then I would say in the beginning of the summer, I drove down East Street Commons and I was, Mr. Abercrombie's right, they're, they're pretty bright shining towards East Street Commons, there's no doubt about it. Well, would it be possible, you know, I've got a conflict here because I live in, in East Street Commons, but I don't live on that side. So uh, as a courtesy, could this board send a letter to the inn and just ask him that, to, if you'd answer some questions about why, you know, he told Tom Quinlan that the, he was going to resolve the matter, and Tom Quinlan cl basically closed the file because he thought it had been done, and it, and it wasn't done. So I, I think it goes back to Tom Quinlan. Yeah. Um, the Night's Inn is not before us. <clears throat> no. Um, yeah. So we don't have any jurisdiction over them at this point, and we are a permitting board, not an enforcement board. The building inspector is the zoning enforcement officer. So there are a couple of scenarios. One is that perhaps we did approve those lights, although um, it would take us some digging in the files, uh, which we don't have access to because we're closed out of town hall too. Um, the more likely scenario, we, generally we have a clause in there about no... Uh, no bright direct light off the property line. Um, the more likely scenario is that one of the prior owners of the Knights Inn decided, or Knights Inn property, decided that they needed to illuminate the darkness that was back there for whatever reason, and maybe just put them in without getting uh, permission. That might be uh, an enforcement method for the zoning enforcement to go, um, officer to go after. I but believe I those lights may have gone in after the uh, campus plaza burned down. So that we probably, they probably weren't on our original plan. And because there was nobody back, there was never an issue. However, now there is, and it is an issue. Is it a bylaw that permitted these, or is it a permit issue? I don't know what legal well, thing. Well, the bylaw by allows one, no more than one foot candle of light or spillage onto the abutting property. That's to where it is now. The question before us is, was this before the bylaw was indicating that this one foot candle uh, is not allowed to spill over in the neighbor's property? But, but but to J Jim's point, if the lights were put in after that's correct, they that's burned correct. down. Uh, which one was that? Five years ago or so oh, that it burned down? No, six days. That's what we. That's what the building inspector will then, have to then, find then, out. Then he couldn't have taken upon himself to put those lights up because he they weren't originally approved to begin with. Well, so that's if, another. If they put them up, and if assuming he got a permit, uh, an electric permit to put them up. Um, the fact that the permit was allowed improperly, uh, it gets, um, Touchy. would be effective, but after five or six years, uh, something that went in with a permit can't be disturbed. Uh -huh. So there's no way to undo a permit even if conditions have changed, which allowed it in the first place, well, not we, after so much time. That's the problem. We, we don't we don't know whether a permit was given. He may have just put them up. So we we do a permit called site plan approval, and that's supposed to show everything that's going to be installed on the site, and we evaluate the impact to try to evaluate the impact of what is proposed on the abutting property. Um, of course, at the time, you weren't there. That was just an empty field. Um, Understood. So, um, so there's nothing to change a law that was applied. Um, it gets it gets very complicated, Mr. Abercrombie. Right now, the planning board doesn't have much authority, if any, to change the problem. 
a zoning enforcement officer, building its plant, building inspector may have some authority. Should the now the 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 property that the Knights Inn is on, and the property that burned down is all one property. If and when that's sold and something else is proposed, the planning board will have all kinds of authority to correct issues. But that may be next week, it may not be for years. So we're trying to address it right now through the zoning enforcement officer and building inspector to alleviate, ex alleviate exactly your problem. And we're hoping we can do that would go without going through a whole lot of trouble on anybody's part, but just by having the lights, if they just turn the lights downward, I believe that will correct a lot of the problem and still give them what they want for their parking lot. It would help. But uh, yeah, it's you know, not going to help a lot as long as it's those types of lights and they're as high as they are above the property. Yeah. But right I'll now, take the anything kind of shining get. outward. But if they shine more downward, they may. I'm, I'm assuming it's going to help a, quite a bit. We would take that. We'd be happy to get some and relief. But until that's tried, we don't know. But I, I, I'm hoping that that will take care of at least a good portion of your problem. You know, how can um, how can they be urged to act after all this time? I'm, I'm going to contact Mr. Quinlan and see if he, what he can do about this. Uh, OK, he's the planning. He's the uh, he's the zoning enforcement officer, building inspector. And, you know, this whole issue, you brought it before me, at least during this COVID epidemic. And I, I assume that the owner did contact Eversource and they just haven't responded. I think Eversource could be uh, leaned on a little bit. I, I really do. <laughs> Good luck. Well, we stopped them putting in, you know, what up off of Mo Moody Bridge. Well, that, that is what the owner says. Uh, the owner says that he contacted them and um, the excuse was they've been so busy. Yeah. Um, after the storm, there was a storm or lighting outages and they were very busy. That was about two months ago. Uh, well, so I don't know. Jim, do you think there's any, um, you know, let's say it's an unshielded fixture. Is that something that we could have approved or would that be in clear violation? Of, say it again, Mark. Let's say that the fixture is unshielded. So even if you turn it down, it's still gonna spray out to the side. It's would definitely that be in, unshielded. Would that be in, in violation? Again, those, those lights have probably been there for so long. The, mm -hmm. like, Ms. like Bill said, the, the jurisdiction to enforce anything has expired. Yeah. How, no, long I, is, how long is that jurisdiction? Is it a zoning law that was a permit? It's part of the general laws. And let me see if I can give you a quick answer. You know, this could, this could be a public health issue too. It's, it's affecting uh, your sleep, exactly. plain and simple. I go to the Board of Health, you got a couple uh, uh, I, I would people think, over there. I would think the more reasonable approach is to request Gently request and prod the neighbor to try to address the lighting issue. And, well, and done. if you start pushing hard against them, he's going to say, this is like an airport that was here before you came. Now you want the, me to but, stop. But, but, but he has been until nothing's happened. That's the whole point. <laughs> yeah. That's why well, I'm coming to you because I've been to him a couple of times and uh, nothing's happened. Seems like a nice guy, but he just doesn't listen. And, I think uh, he's the businessman. I think, uh, I bet he could be persuaded. Well, I'm hoping someone can help me persuade him. <laughs> I don't want to put him out of business. I simply want to be able to sleep at night um, and to see if there's something can be done. There Certainly, be he's going to argue the security issue. And the security issue is paramount because there was this issue where a young woman was strangled in the parking lot at the mall. And 
there was a lot of concern about the lighting not being adequate so that she could be subdued. And uh, he could use that argument. I mean, it, this is something that I would gently persuade him and perhaps you could even take a collection from the neighborhood to help defray the cost. So what, what you're looking at is chapter 40A, that's a capital A, uh, section seven, which is enforcement of zoning regulations. Zoning of enforcement regulations? Enforcement of zoning regulations. Section seven. Uh, it basically has a uh, a six year and a ten year statute of limitations. That's chapter forty eight of what? Mass general laws. Well, I would be happy to have any direction, any guidance. I appreciate the suggestions here. Uh, as to what can be done gently, I'm not going to, I just want to resolve it and resolve it in a, in a kind way, if that's possible. Well, if, if in fact Eversource is the problem, then you have to be persistent. You don't call them once and say, well, they haven't responded. You call them every day. I, I know how to be a pain and you know, you know what, okay? And, and somebody will respond. Well, that's, that's, I that's, haven't. I haven't talked to them at all. The owner said that he had, uh, who would I contact? I'll be happy to do that. I don't know. You're going to do a little, you know, their, their office is right over here on, on Russell Street in Hadley. So that's, that's getting a little outside of our jurisdiction. Yeah, all right, right. Um, well, your knowledge goes deep, gentlemen. Sure. We don't, we don't, we're old enough to know how to get things done, okay? And exactly. I kind of disagree with my friend, Dr. Zagrodnik. My city's have a place but uh so basically if something was done according to a building permit um you have six years to challenge it if something was done without a building permit you have 10 years to challenge it um but whether um we don't have the baseline of when those lights went in uh, that, that the information's out there um but um, yeah, I, I we'll <clears throat> we'll just talk to the building inspector. Uh, that's that's the only route we can offer. Only route we can offer. You may have other routes, uh, including retaining an attorney to talk directly with the property owner. Um, can you can the uh, chapter forty a section seven be accessed online? Yes. yes. Okay. So I asked the inspector uh, what enabled that. He didn't know. So if I tell him this, he can follow up with that, you think? He may be able to. Um, you know, again, uh, he can, he has the ability, presumably, to pull uh, records of if. If someone pulled a permit to put those lights up, he would have those records. Okay. And that would tell you how long they've been there. The fire was November 1st, uh, 2013. Uh-huh. So what was that? What is the date for, what is that the date for? The date that the laundromat burned that's opened up that whole property. Almost seven years ago. If you were to pursue what uh, Joe Zagrodnik was saying, basically more carrot than stick, one option just, I'm just thinking outside the box is if you got hold of an electrician that had a boom truck, you could send a letter or something to this owner and to Ever Ever say, I've, I've got, got someone, someone who's willing, willing to, to try and adjust, adjust this. this. Do either of you have, have a problem with that? that? You know, you that, know, that way, way you're, you're saying, I'll, I'll take, take care, care of it. You don't, don't have, have to. Just, just don't, don't stop, stop me. me. 
believe yeah, and yeah, considered yeah. some other ways, ways of taking care of it, but none, none of them are legal, so I've not, not taken advantage, advantage of those. Mm -hmm. yeah, so so I, I, yeah, I, I, I do, do want, want to caution us. We should, we should you know, it's, it's outside, outside of our jurisdiction. jurisdiction. Uh, we, we would, would like, like to be helpful. helpful. We don't have a lot we can offer. And, um, uh, you know, you have options. Uh, you may want to consult an attorney. You may want to consult with the building inspector. You if, may want it to is, if it is within the time that you can reconsider the zoning, uh, that would be something you could do, correct? No, no. It's not a matter of reconsidering. That's the time within which the zoning enforcement officer can take action against the property. I see. We so cannot that, go back. We have been told that once we have approved and once construction has begun, according to our approval, we cannot revoke, rescind, amend. It's out of our hands at that point. So yeah, the next, next step for me is to see what was approved. As Jim said, the only leverage we have is if the property abutting it, which is the same property, is going to be developed, mm -hmm. further developed. I'm guessing it's not going to be developed until the whole Route 9 widening takes place. I mean, at the Our, early... The whole thing has been condoized. I will tell you that, regrettably, we are unable at this time to provide you with a copy of the decision because we are closed out of our offices at Town Hall. So, um, so COVID is eating up your clock. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And there's no way to access this online. Or no. Any of those records. Uh, we don't have records online going anywhere near that far back. Or, Bill, aren't there people in town hall working? There are. Couldn't we ask, couldn't we ask them to go through our files? No. No. Nope, those are our files. Uh, you know, they're, uh, they don't have, we're not welcome in theirs and they're not welcome in ours. Thank you. And I'm not sure, it would I, that's sure it would necessarily provide a big answer. Did, does anybody remember what name we approved it under? It wasn't Knights Inn. No, it was uh, Campus Plaza something or other. Campus, but it be plain old campus plaza. Yeah, there was a lot of controversy with the shared parking, but I don't remember anything about the lighting. Well, the, at the back then, the lighting was all uh, back, so it was, and there was nothing back there. Correct. It, was, it wasn't a big deal. I don't know why they bothered paying for lights in the back, but. I think there are two. Well, there is some parking space in back, and there is an entrance in back. I think there are two sets of lights. There's what would normally be considered lighting for the parking lot, and there's these lights, which are above and beyond and different. I will double check that, but uh, I think there are two sets of lights. And it may turn out that these are not the, the motels at all. It may turn out to be Wemco's. I don't know. But I thank you for taking the time and giving me some guidance. Appreciate it. Okay. I might be back. You're welcome. Thanks for your work. Keep us posted, Wayne. I will, Michael. Thank you. So no. I'll see you on Monday, Mark. Yeah, you will. <laughs> Bye. Right. All right. Thank now you. up to Chris Garcia, Phil O'Brien, and I assume that's what Patrick is here for, too. Yes. <laughs> Yep, gentlemen. So we have just recently sent you a uh, modification to the site plan that this board has already approved. Uh, this is based on input from the fire department who came out uh, to do their uh, kind of pre-final walkthrough at the site. And the um, fire department was not happy with the width of the driveways coming into the building. And they were concerned that they may not be able to turn their vehicles into the first uh, turnaround in the in the parking lot, which is the kind of cross lane that goes directly behind the 
the library and that they would have- If I could interrupt, could we just tell the public what property we're talking about? Yes, I'm sorry. This is, uh, this was filed under, I believe it's 48 Middle, which is the library senior center project. Um, this was a joint application between those two properties. Um, the senior center has finished and has been signed off as far as I know. Um, and they are partially open to the public. Um, so they are, they have their occupancy permit. So this is just the front portion of the site and project that we're talking about now, which is the library project. Um, and so the impact there is uh, the one-way uh, inbound driveway and the one-way exit driveway on the south and on the north side of the library, respectively. Um, and then the chief is also concerned about turning a vehicle, as I said, into the first turnaround and has asked us to remove some of the islands that we have there. Um, it pushes the driveways out a little bit in terms of their width by a couple of feet and the, the curbing in the in the grassy area that's surrounded, um, that the curbing surrounds in those first two islands uh, would come out as well and get striped in and paved. This has a, a small impact on the overall green space um, coverage, but we're still significantly over the 20% minimum. Uh, the revised numbers are shown in the plan that we submitted to the board. So this is the plan that you're referring to, you sent us uh, on September 9th. This that's correct. Nathan Ketchel? Yes, Ketchel. that's correct. I can share the site plan on the screen if, if everyone would want to see that. Sure. I've left sharing enabled, so you can go ahead. What about the one that came through today? Uh, Have we? Have we told the public who are watching this what organization these people are employed by? So you're on mute. Uh, my name is Christopher Garcia. I'm with Garcia, Koleska, and D'Souza Consulting Engineers. We were the civil engineer on the project. Okay. And my so you're, you're the owner's project manager, OPM? No, no we were engineer. the civil engineers on the uh, project. And my name is Philip O'Brien with Johnson Roberts Associates Architects, and we're the architects working with the Library Building Committee on this project. Thank you. Can Can someone point out exactly what we're talking about in the area? Yes. Um, okay, good. Thank you. You can see the screen? Yep. Yes. Uh, my cursor, my hand moving around? Yep. yep. This is the one way in Correct. to the site. Uh, so where this hi bubbled highlight area is where we increase the width it was originally 16 feet and is now increased to 21. So we had a site which was a one way in and um, with an exit one way out on the north side back to Middle Street. Obviously the senior center is to the east of this plan, plan right. Um, so as we travel out, um, starting roughly at this point, we increased it from 18 feet to 20 feet um, to the exterior, uh, to middle street. So this curb got adjusted. Um, as Phil mentioned, there was two parking islands, um, one in this location and one right here in this location. So in eliminating the curved areas, expanding the driveways, it was approximately 570 square feet of green space um, that was turned to hard paving. Um, we originally had 27.6% green space and now it's 27.1%. So the modification is primarily the entrance off of Middle Street. Is it widening of the whole driveway in that area or just the turning radius as they enter with the fire truck? Um, so it's, we increased it in this, lo this whole curb line uh, from where the crosswalk is to Middle Street. 
the, the radius. So it's approximately five feet that we same. widen here. It just slid down. So we're not seeing what it was before you widened it, but the assumption is that because it makes a smooth transition to the south edge of the pavement at the south side of the property, that you must have widened behind the angled parking as well, or no? Uh, no, so this is the original approved plan. Oh, okay. Um, so so the curb line on the north, uh, stays. There was no modifications there. We basically, um, you could see this thin line underneath. That was yeah. the original uh, edge of pavement. Uh, we basically just matched that um, with this new plan. Okay. So we just widened that area. So are you saying that the original approved plan was not up to code? Well, the fire safety code notes that fire lanes access should be 20 feet wide. The fire safety code also has provisions that give the authority having jurisdiction some leeway um, if sites similar to what we had here, which was a very tight site, allows them to allow um, modifications to that requirement. So basically, when we went through the permitting progress, we uh, process, you know, with the senior center, we believed that this that original design was acceptable. And as Phil mentioned, when the fire chief had gone out to the site, he had you know he had requested that we increase the width of the entry and the exit. I don't recall during the hearing that uh, there was a request for modification to minimize the entrance. So, who it was taken, who made the decision to minimize the turning radius? Well, that was just, that was the design plan. Um, so it was to have uh, the entry 16 feet, um, the exit at 18 feet wide that met the um, bylaw. Uh, there was turning radiuses, swept plans that showed the um, fire vehicle could access the site, make it all the way down to the senior center and come back through. Uh, so, Did you tell anyone that this was not fire code with? Uh, no, we did not have a specific, um, that specific conversation. There was a, there was a fire truck swept plan that was reviewed. Um, along with the other engineer that was involved in the senior center. Um, so that is why uh, we thought, thought that that access was going to be acceptable. We did, uh, you will recall, we did team up with the senior center design team to work this out together. And part of what we did well, is not, give you up those. This is not totally true because we repeatedly asked that the senior center and the library come in together, the planning board, they did not. The senior center came in first, then the library came in. Then they superimposed their plans. So it was not exactly the way you stated. I, I, I believe you are correct in that they the senior center did initially come in uh, with basically a, uh, like a pad plan. They basically had drawn a rectangle in to represent the library with in and out lanes shown on their plan. And you would ask them to come go back and to work with the library senior center design team. And we did, we did do that from there on up. There's enough blame to go around and I don't, I'm, I don't wanna play the name game. What does it take for us to resolve this and what will it cost and who's gonna bear the cost? I, I'm gonna say that's, that's, that's outside of our jurisdiction. Okay. But I would like I would like to know, and the public would like to know too. Well, I'm sure they would, but that we're not we're not making those decisions. <clears throat> uh, the question before us is to review a revised plan. Uh, my first reaction to the revised plan is 
okay, has the fire chief signed off on it? Has the building inspector signed off on it? I know you're saying that this is what they wanted, but um, I was at a, what's called the development team meeting this afternoon. And um, as far as I know, everyone is still looking at this. So yeah, I think from, from the planning board perspective, I think what we want to get to is, okay, this is the reality we are dealing with, but let's try to get it right one just with one more stab at it or get it as right as we can so i think we need to have be sure we have sign it sign off buy-in from building from fire department maybe we need the sign off from the um, select board on behalf of the senior center that it is all working um and the DPW should it also, they were concerned about the snow, but they came in and said everything was just fine. We're going to plow the snow. We're going to remove the snow. And now they have second thoughts. Uh, don't know. We, we have a letter from the then director of the DPW saying he can handle the snow removal for the site. Apparently, our current director, who replaced the former director, uh, may have reservations. I'm not sure about that. Um, what, what do you mean? We, we have a new director with DPW? Chris Okafor. Well, he was the one who signed off on the original one. That was Marlo. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. Yeah, You're Mar right. Yeah, that far back. Okay. But Marlowe signed off that he could he could clear the snow. So what you're saying, Bill, is we we will not make a decision tonight, but we should receive verification that indeed the fire chief has looked at it, DPW has looked at it. Yeah, I, 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 at this point, and you know, the, our bylaw does say that we send out notices to everybody. And if we don't hear from people in X number of days, we're assuming that you're okay with it. But well, I think in this case, we definitely should be asking for, uh, you know, written, uh, written approval. Um, we're, uh, but there, there, you, you, you've addressed one of our concerns specifically. But your, you, your point is a good point, Bill. And I think, from going forward now, if we do not have a response, we should not give approval. Well, you know, we're, we, 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 tried to, we tried to anticipate things when we were involved in the original site plan approval, and certainly snow removal was one of them. And we were told it was going to be okay. I always had my doubts. But the other thing that was brought up was uh, the uh, the uh, resurrection of Goodwin Memorial Library for public offices. And this has reared its head again, and it's, it's gonna go forward. So the original site plan is, is, I don't think, sufficient to address everything that's going on on this whole site. And we were told that it was not to be addressed. Well, now it has to be addressed, I'm sorry. We've got a building that's gonna have no parking. And what are we gonna do about that? We're going to take that up when the, the reuse plans get presented to us. Uh -huh. The good one's going to still have their nine spaces that they've always had. They're not removed in this plan. But the planning board has five members, and if we have a public hearing when we go into the good one, we may have... Then, then we're happy to share our 96 parking spaces with you. That's what we'll have to come up with some kind of arrangement. You're correct. That will be fine. Did the original site plan have granite curb stones in it, or were those decided on late after the fact? It was the always vertical granite curb. Yeah. The, plan the, the planning board has granite curb. Did we? Okay. Yeah, I, th I think Bill's right. I mean, on this particular one, I think the, if, if the DPW, and or especially the fire department, and the 
board of selectmen are okay with the plan, then I'm sure we're going to be okay with the plan because the changes to the zoning part of the site is minor and it still complies. Right. I agree. So, we will, before we approve, we want to make sure they're all good. Yes, good. And, and is that a point of clarification, Mr. Chairman? Is that an internal um, process that you will go through? In other words, I want to clarify that you, you don't need us to reach out to these folks to ask for. Well, you, you, you need to go to the Board of Selectmen and the Fire Department and make sure they're okay with that. Yeah, we, we've done that. We have emails from the fire department and from the building inspector. I, th I think we'd like to sign letters. Yes. Yep. And, and the question is whether or not you need us, you would like us to reach out to them for that or if that is. Well, if, you, if you have emails from the board of selectmen and the fire department and the building inspector that says this is okay, could you forward them to us so we could see them? Sure. Um, we have it from the, the building department and the fire department. We haven't, I haven't asked for an approval from the when you when you say the building department you mean the library building department that's not a department that's a committee isn't it yeah right committee the, the, the building bu inspector mr quinlan mr quinlan okay we we were on site um miss uh chief spanknabel mr quinlan and myself uh were on site when we went over these um what the concerns were and then we sent the plan just prior to uh, the stamped version of the plan that you have a copy of now, we sent that off to them um, and they responded that that was what they were looking for and then they were satisfied with it. Um, I'm happy to get those emails to you and um, we could reach out to the select board as well. I think this is on their agenda for tomorrow night anyway. Okay. So the, the so you were also asking for sign up from the DPW and the select board. Is that what I heard? Not the DPW. The DPW is our, it really addresses uh, snow removal. They've already addressed that. Okay. Um, looking for, this is really about the fire truck access for the, I mean, Meeting code, building inspector, fire department, board of selectmen. Okay. I think there were also some questions raised about some doors, exit doors to nowhere and adding more sidewalks or something of that nature. You want to point that out on the plan, Chris? Um, that's on the north side here. There was an egress door in this location. This sidewalk was added. With a handrail, I see. Correct. There is some great change as it falls off. So we have the handrail. <clears throat> that, that handrail is not required by the building code. Uh, the building official asked us to add it for additional safety reasons. Actually said, I can't force you to do it, but I think it's a good idea. And so the building committee decided to, to put it in. The grade is not steep enough to require it. So I am usually more reluctant than most to talk about conditional approvals, but um, I do note this is a five Tuesday month. So we're not going to be meeting after tonight until uh, October 6th. And I think there is some hope of getting the paving done before that. Is that correct, Jane? The library's plan is to pave, I believe it's the 21st. Is that right, Phil? Um, they, they, the 21st date that you're thinking of was August. Uh, August. They put, they've put that off. They're waiting. They're waiting for an approval. They would obviously like to do it as soon as they can. I know the other issue that's, that's pending is they need their occupancy permit in order to get the rest of the money from the Massachusetts Library Board, which saves the town having to borrow to pay the bills. So, um, well, rather than giving conditional approval, 
can we just as a library building committee did, can we just uh, assign our authority in this, say we stand by the original site plan and any ch changes will be the responsibility of the select board? No, uh, that we can't do. Why? We, we, can't, we can't give our authority to anybody else. Is there any hope that you might hold a special meeting with one item on it that would be this item before your next scheduled meeting on October 6th? We probably could do that easily enough. You know, yeah. uh, how about a kind of a compromise, uh, giving conditional approval after the chairman has been satisfied that the emails or the letter from the fire chief, the select board, and the DPW. A building inspector, you mean? Fire department. So, you know, would you be willing to take on that responsibility, Jim, and give, so we'll give you the authority to change it, or can we do that? I think you can. I think we can do it until someone tells us we can't. You think so, Bill? I think so. Um, Yeah, we approve on condition. Right. That the fire department, building inspector, and board of selectmen have approved the plans. Yeah, and uh, DPW, did, did, you, did you include that? He Go struck that. I don't know if we need a DPW. Well, they were the ones complaining about the snow removal or the inability for the snow plow to get in. Uh, but, yeah. but that's gotten easier. Right? Yeah, I mean, they, did, that, that, they did remove something that had been a concern to something about that island to the east of the building had been a concern of, the, of Chris. So I think that has been addressed by... Okay, just acknowledge that by a, some form of... Yeah, let's, ask, let's, ask that, let's ask for... So uh, approve, on the con, approve the revised plans on the condition that the chair is satisfied the fire department, building inspector, DPW, and board of selectmen have <clears throat> also approved. I think that's a good idea. You know, the DPW is probably going to access have to access this property a lot more than uh, the uh, fire fire department is. Okay, so that's my motion to uh, approve on the condition that the chair is satisfied that the fire department, building inspector, DPW, and board of selectmen uh, and select board SB, not BOS, uh, have also approved the same plan. I'll second that motion. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Oh. Okay. Thank uh, you. Have a good evening. Bill. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Yes, sir. Would you send those emails directly to me? I, I will. Uh, it, I don't know if I have your email address. Jim? You got a pencil? I do. Jim underscore my last name at charter.net. Charter. So Jim underscore Maximoski at charter.net. And there's my name on, right there in front of you. And I will forward everything to everybody else on the planning board when it, when it comes through. Thanks, some musky. All right, I got it. Thank you very much for your time. Great. Mr. Dwyer, who's up next? Uh... Well, uh, Jane was actually in next. I don't know if you had anything for us or are you just keeping an eye on what's going on? 
Okay. And John Washkevitz just checked in. I'm not sure if that's a reaction to anything. Are you just checking in? No, I was just checking in, seeing if you guys are going to discuss that library. That's all. Okay. Or have you done it already? We just did. Okay. That's all I was interested in. Okay. You, you're welcome to stay for the discussion of definitions. Yeah. Well, I'll give you a call about what happened. All right. Yeah, I'm sure Jane will fill me in. But yeah, okay. I'll stick around. Thank you, guys. Okay. Mr. Jim? Hi, board. Thanks for hanging, for bearing with us. Oh, no, of course. I'd like, I always like to see what's going on in town. Um, and then you guys have like a full plate of um, various uh, items from enforcement to talking about some new buildings and trying to deal with that. Um, I, I do have a comment. I should have interjected. I put a note. Um, but with regards to maybe um, some idea um, on looking for any sort of recorded permits, you do have the registry of deeds. So possibly if that permit had a special permit or a variance or whatnot um, for that um, property on Route 9, it could be there. They, back then they were supposed to file it, but we, we discovered a lot of places didn't file. Oh, yeah. And I would guess that that property owner, probably one of them may not have filed anything. Okay. But anyways, thank you. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. So um, we're talking about the uh, definitions and the um, inclusionary zoning definition. So, um, Jim, is there a um, hard and fast deadline as to when we're going to have to schedule this public hearing. Yes. Okay. It is uh, basically a month away. Okay. The special town meeting right now is scheduled for October 17th on a Saturday. So I will schedule, I will get the information into the uh, town administrator and schedule a public hearing um, within the next week or two. Okay. So it looks like October 6th is it. Right. Let's do a special. Um, okay, yeah, that's, that's good. We've got, it's got three weeks. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, I guess if there's any refinement, um, I can just turn those well, around quick. A couple of minor things, and I'll take care of them. Okay. On the definitions. Did you, did you want to discuss anything or have any questions regarding those? No question, just a couple of corrections. Okay. Um, I know that there was, there was just one thing that needed to be filled out and I couldn't find it in the town documents with regards to the date um, as to, um, and maybe you don't need to put it there um, and maybe your attorney will suggest that you know, you, you have your sub, sub, subdivision controller, and this is in response, this is in regard to road or way um, that suggests um, in existence prior to said subdivision control law having become effective in the town of Hadley date. If you want to put that there, um, I've seen it done either way. Um, you can just strike that if you want as the chair, um, if that makes sense to you. What is that again now? So it's under the definition for street, road, or way. Um, it's on page uh, 15. Um, and it was in yellow. Um, I, put, I put in parenthesis um, yellow X's um, in case you wanted to put the date there. Um, I'm not sure if the attorney would suggest Oh, that. I see that you'd want to put a date there when your original subdivision control law went into effect. Um, I think that, then you can just put that in there. Um, Believe it or not, I once looked that up. So <laughs> I, I, if it was in the computer era, I may have it somewhere. It's before the computer era. Well, no, my, my research was post computer era. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Somebody, uh, uh, yeah, a question came up around one of our projects uh, as to whether the uh, subdivision control law had 
actually been adopted. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's specific to to how streets are um, accepted in town. So, you know, the subdivision control law would apply there. Um, and that's, you know, and your attorney might say that you don't need it there. Um, and if it's just to cite that um, the subdivision control law, um, you know, is, is, the, is the start of that uh, clock, um, then that's, you know, what he decides. But um, I've seen it presented either way. Um, but that was my only like last second thing. I think everything else based on our conversation at the last meeting with regards to removing the lines, with regards to, um, you know, creating some sort of um, understanding that these are specific to these umbrella terms um, are, you know, they, they've been shown with an indentation. Um, and I think that might be helpful um, if you need to present that in any way at, at town meeting um, or for the public hearing um, to show that, you know, it's specific to those sections and they were found in those sections of the bylaw. All right, so I'm, just to be clear, so you're saying the street, road, or way mm -hmm. is specific to the solar? Um, no. I need. Oh, oops. I think that needs to be just re-indented back. That, or, that means to be pulled back, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think everything after it, because you've got street, road, and way, structure, and use. Those should all pop out. You're right. I'm making those changes now, um, Jim, okay. and I can send them to you. Um, those indentation changes that um, Mark suggested. Because they don't fall under the solar bylaw, so we're just we're just create we're just putting them all the left justified all the way to the end, which of makes the them a general definition. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Good catch, Mark. Yeah. I had to take my glasses off for that one. No, I did. We resolve that. Are you looking for the date of the original adopting of subdivision? regulation um yes okay because that was done before i was on the planning board so prior 1975 it's it's probably going to be around that time um and jim street and wampanoag drive were and there's a couple more that were pretty much stone and gravel and a uh, little bit of blacktop mm -hmm. and a little bit of uh so jim do you know when your uh, street was put in 1972 that's uh that's about right yeah 72 or 73 the uh but they update, they update, it became a town road because they completely repaved it about Correct. six or seven years ago. That then in Wampanoag Drive, they did the same thing. Here, right? Okay. So it, it, it was originally adopted. Okay, I got a couple of minor corrections. I will, I will take care of it, Ken. Okay. Um, but I believe it's on page three, building height. That's a good question, Jim. I have the same. Go ahead. No, it's not a question. It's a, it's a correction. Um, minor correction. You've got the vertical distance measured from the established grade in the business or industry district. It should be bus any business, any business or industrial district. Okay. That makes sense. I'll take care of that one. That's just, a, these are just little things I caught when I was going through it. And, um, and the other thing, all right. The rest of the board satisfied with the measurement of height. Remember, uh, mean, m average. Uh, now you're talking about, uh, I think it's a uh, rafter line or something like that. Yep. The, to the highest point of the roof beam, in the case of flat roofs or roofs inclining not more than one into the foot, and to the highest ridge in the case of other roofs. Okay, the ridge, ridge line then. Yeah. So it's That's the peak. 
That's what we wanted. Yes, correct. Okay. Not uh, including the, sure the rest of the board is satisfied because there was a lot of discussion. Yeah. Right. And so that's the ridge, not the cupola. Right. Yeah, right. cupolas don't count. And I think the other thing, thing, too, is that uh, under uh, defining frontage, side yard, there's one depth, uh, one definition of depth. Uh, do we need that? Or is because width is not in there, and width is in our zoning bylaw, and we have a whole paragraph dedicated to that. And that's not changed. That's not changed, correct. Right. We, there are certain things that we left in certain sections because of that. Yeah, that's, that's we wanted to make sure there's no conflict. You're right. Um, but depth, I don't remember even that coming up. And, you know, it's no big deal, but... Uh, You're talking about lot depth? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I because width kind of takes care of that as long as they can put a house on that lot and the 150 by 150 square satisfies that I think um, that def well if it's not in 4.3 it is listed at in your um, table of dimensional and density regulations I guess if that if you the, as as a minimum lot dimension, you have frontage depth width. Yeah, um, depth is used in the zoning bylaws. Yeah. Yes. I don't see the Grodnick square in the definitions. Yeah. <laughs> it's in width. It's in the zoning bylaw. We, we didn't. Okay. They changed the name to make it more <laughs> acceptable to the yeah. to various communities. I. Uh, the other, the other question I found, Ken, is Mark, on page. Just I, I have just a wise crack to Mark a little bit. There's no, no uh, truth to the matter that I put my head down and traced it, and that's how it became a square. Okay. All right, we'll, we'll pass the mic back to Jim. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think okay. it's on page seven. Um, zone A ninety nine. The definition. Oh, yep, yeah. means areas. It means areas. It should be areas. I'm assuming. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, just again, there's just a couple of minor things. I will take care of. It. It's not a big deal. Okay. I just want to mention it so that you'll see it. So you'll see it. Okay. So the subdivision control law was adopted by the uh, town meeting on. Um, <laughs> February 8, 54? 64? 54. 54? No. Wow. No. Yeah, that was the original Subdivision Control Act. 1954? Yeah. Am I the only planning board member that wasn't born then? No, I wasn't born either at that time. I wasn't I was born, born either. I was born two <laughs> weeks later. <laughs> to, to put it in perspective, Joe Zagrenik's basketball team has just begun to win 42 straight games. <laughs> now, is, is that the end of the season, Mike? Mark, they would have been well into the winning streak. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Ken, thanks for bearing with us so late in the evening. That's We're getting okay. punchy. Yeah. Other than that, Ken, I think the definitions look good. We'll pre pre preface it with my uh, comments about where we're taking definitions out of it into here that I had for the last one, and that's good. Okay. Anybody else have comments on definitions? A job well done. Thank you. Next one on the uh, um, inclusionary zoning. I'm putting to Mike gave me a good overall view of uh, 
how to come up with a cost. And I think we kind of agree that that's what we're going to go forward with. That's so It's going to kind of be, unfortunately, it's going to kind of look like a, a tax form because I can't think of a better way to do it where you add these, add these, subtract these and come up with a total and stuff. So what I, what I may suggest, Jim, is maybe if you can create, um, and I, I was taking a look um, before the meeting on how other towns were doing it, um, but understanding that Mike had a specific definition, create variables for each of those items and describe them. Um, I think also something that the board can consider as the board is exploring also adopting planning board regulations is to put general language in the bylaw addressing that your calculations or however you want to um, show how, how, how to come to this, this number and this calculation um, in, in those regulations. So you have the bylaw that says the board from time to time can amend um, the regulations, but to calculate the um, payment in lieu of affordable housing unit that's not built on site, um, go to the planning board regulations. Perfect. We need wiggle room. So what you're saying is put in the zone bylaw that this will be calculated and put in the regulations, the actual formula? Yeah. So um, I, can, I, I'm, I can quickly share, um, since I have the ability to, um, I had this document here. So if you take a look at this section, this is from the town of Ipswich. Um, you know, obviously you're gonna, you're gonna change this, but um, I could see like cash payment would be um, under the heading um, that you have in your reserved uh, bylaw section. Um, and this can be finessed obviously. Um, but stated that the fee can be calculated for what, whatever your conditions are based on the formula in the planning board regulation inclusionary housing payment in lieu of option adopted whenever. And you're, and you're right, you're right, Ken, there are variables here. And I think the determination of what those variables will be when the uh, formula is used should be at the sole discretion of the planning board. Yeah, and I, and I think you can give yourself that ability based on um, the ability to refine that in your regulations. Um, you know, this is again, similar to what the board adopt or what the um, town adopted with regards to the stormwater bylaw, right? We're yeah. gonna be working on those regulations um, to have what permittees would need to ensure compliance with so that, and, and because it's still fluid and it requires um, a, a citation of Massachusetts stormwater guidelines, which are amended from time to time, if you have that in your regulation, um, it relies on that. So you don't need to put that in your bylaw. Otherwise you're gonna have to keep amending your bylaw um, if, if, you know, depending on whatever. Uh, but yeah. that's some suggested language, um, and I can and I can work with the board and work with Jim um, to come up with some general bylaw language, and then show how to address the um, the actual formula. Yep. I think, uh, and and th so under this line too is from the city of Somerville, which uh, has a cash payment option. I deleted some language with regards to. Um, developers offering property um, that could also be used for affordable housing um, because this is specific to cash payments. And the reason why I brought up the formula idea with variables is, um, is shown here in this, in this document. Um, so there's that. Um, but yeah, I, I guess that's just an option for the board if, if you want to explore um, it, adopting a bylaw that relies on the passage of regulations to um, identify that calculation that the board will be using to... Um, this, this makes the, my thing a lot easier because as opposed to making it hard and fast, this, this, this way it's hard and fast, but it gives enough room for the planning board to amend without going through town meeting every time. Right. 
Could you forward me this sheet that you can write on? Yes. The yeah, I'm gonna. I'll forward the board that. Um, I was putting it together and un, not knowing where where you were at the time. Um, I know that yeah. in looking at some of your previous planning board meetings, Mike was you know discussing his definition, and it's good to to see that you've landed on you know using that. Um, but I I will share this with the board. This is you know um, oversimplified. The, the form that's going to be the cost of the bit the land, the wholesale cost of the building. And the mortgage based on a rate from three local, the lowest rate of three local banks over 15 years totalized, subtract the subsidy, and then that difference will be what will go into the fund. What I'm trying it, to it, it, Excuse me, Jim, one, one clarification. I, I, we don't have to do this, but I said, I think most recently I said the th three, the uh, average of 15 year mortgage rate for three local banks or the developer's cost of capital, which could be less. And if his cost of capital and building something is less than the mortgage rate, then I think it's only fair that we go with the cost of capital. What but we cost, don't have to do that. What does cost of capital mean? It's whatever, whatever is cost of accessing funds, funds that a local bank is. It could be the sign of credit, you know? I mean, it might be easier to keep the. I, I think we want to. We, yeah, let's let's keep it as it we'd is. Have to, we'd, we'd have to define cost of capital. Yeah, yeah gotcha. Otherwise, and that could be. Gotcha. gotcha. A, I'm not saying it's out of the question. I'm just saying it might be better no. updated. My no, biggest. And question, just just to, for example, what is the cost? Wholesale cost of construction has gone up significantly in the last four or five months. So the amount that would be contributed to the uh, housing trust would be significantly more than it was. Four or five months ago, that's just the way the formula operates, and you know incomes have not risen dramatically. And most of the old uh, formulas that we've seen from various communities based contributions on on income. So this, in some ways, this could benefit Hadley, I guess. The cost of the mortgage is easy enough by going to local banks and getting hard. Sure. Debt. Sure. How do we determine? the wholesale, or how do we make sure that they determine a good wholesale cost of building? What do we use to verify that's where I'm kind of, kind of coming from right now? Any ideas? Um, we're, when I originally started talking to you about this, you, you, you came up with a wholesale square footage number and I don't know where you got it. That, that came from Barry Roberts. Ah, okay. Okay. And Barry is, I think we're going to admit, is, a, is, is you know, is a credible developer. What if, what if somebody comes in and say, they say that, uh, you know, their average, their wholesale cost is who knows what, and it doesn't seem right or way out of what everybody else is saying, using. Oh, yeah. The, 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 How do we verify a wholesale cost is what I'm wondering. Yeah, the number can't come from the developer because then there's nothing arm's length at all. Right. We have to right. get it. I don't disagree one bit with that, but what do we use? Is there a is there some kind of a someplace we can go for this? I'm sure there is. Mm. <laughs> I mean it's been a while since I've built a house. I never luckily if we're gonna put this in a regulations, we don't need to put it into the zoning bylaw, but it's something we definitely need to think about to put into the regulations to verify the wholesale cost. Yeah. I wonder if like Fannie Mae or somebody has a has an index. Good point. Yeah. So the architectural society must have an answer to that one, Mark. I mean, there's, there's got to be there's an a lot of variables there. Of home builders, and they would certainly have it. Let me see if there is. Well, I can, I can ask around, but we're not going to get the answer tonight. No, no, and I'm, I I realize that, but I mean. Yeah. That's the good part, because from what Ken is, Ken is saying, if we can put into the regulations, we don't need it tonight, but we will need it relatively soon. Yep. There is a National Association of Home Builders. Uh, I would yeah. think they probably have some pretty good numbers. Yeah, I mean, we, 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 we can look around for that. Yeah, we can and look around. Gonna, you know, and that's going to vary from Stoughton exactly. to, to right. Great Stock, you know, to... 
Well, right now, today, with the cost of lumber going out of sight, the wholesale cost is greatly different than it was just two months ago. Right. You know, yeah. lumber, the five L's. You know, um, yeah. Right, right now, lumber has almost doubled in the last three weeks. I bought some two by tens three months ago for, for $12. Last week I bought some two by six, two by twelve by twelve footers for twelve dollars. Two by tens, I'm sorry, two by tens, twelve foot. I think they were twelve ninety eight. I bought some two by six by ten foot last Friday. They were almost fourteen dollars. So they saw you coming. <laughs> they sure did. Well, you're right, Jim. I mean, the the graph. Evidently, the, it's a lumber's future. It's a little bit more complicated, and but uh, it's scheduled to come down. Once well, you, I'm sure it will. Once you complete I'll, your I'll project, say, it'll come down. My general comment is: right now, the cost of a of a square foot wholesale cost is out of sight. You're right. Two months you're ago, right. it was a lot less. So, you know, as soon as everybody. You know, when it will come down, I don't, you know, hopefully it will. I don't think it's going to come down until interest rates go up, but that's just my opinion. We'll see. Anyway. There's such a, such a demand okay. for housing because mortgage rates are two and a half, three percent, you know. Okay. So, Ken will get me that. The we'll, we'll, I will work with Ken on getting this into uh, a zoning bylaw form and a regulation wording. And... Those are the two items we had for the uh, town meeting, right, Bill? Yes. Definitions and inclusionary? Um, we're still, um, <clears throat> I'm not sure what's happening with Megan's Way. Okay. I'm not sure that has <clears throat> broken through whatever stranglehold Chris Okafer has on it. Okay. But that's not really a zoning issue right now. Not a zoning a issue, no. issue right now. Okay. I mean, we're all set with that. As far as we know, we as far as we know, yes. Pardon? Okay. What else have you got for us, Ken? Um, I think that was it. Um, I think you know. I think understanding what the work plan after um, town meeting or after we got through the definitions. Um, that was my understanding of um, you know what would what we would be working on next. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I know that, as I mentioned at the last meeting, um, you know, we have to finalize the stormwater regulations um, that the planning board should be adopting. Right. Um, and then Bill had mentioned also that we should be um, looking at the subdivision regulations to see um, and consider um, any revisions to that. Um, right to include MS4 um, permit requirements, as well as maybe something the board has been talking about. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if, if you've had any discussions about um, your subdivision regs and maybe we can tackle them. I, I think with, with the weight that we're putting on regulations, I think the next thing to work on is getting reg planning board regulations in right. place because we're, we're hinging a lot of stuff on regulations <laughs> right. right now. Right. So Ken, we had done a <clears throat> pretty massive rewrite of the subdivision regulations within the last three or four years uh, and when Larry was still with PVPC. Yeah. So um, I think the only thing we need to look at in the subdivision, and we've only had one subdivision come through under the new regulations. Okay. So I think what we only thing we really have to look at there is conforming them to MS4. Yeah. yeah, and the really the, the thing that I'm finding with conformance to MS4 with your existing subdivision regulations or towns existing subdivision regulations is if the board really wants to look specific at, specifically at um, plantings and landscaping, that's where we can address MS4 requirements, um, as well as um, if the board wants to um, identify low impact development type construction. Um, obviously, there are concerns with that too, because 
they may require um, additional town capacity to take care of those things, um, especially if they're on the street. Um, you know, if instead of doing your normal um, drainage system, and I, you know, I'm I'm not the pro with stormwater, but um, understanding that there are other ideas like um, imper impervious or not impervious, um, permeable um, sidewalks or permeable, you know, roadways or driveways, requiring that as part of development or exploration of um, that in development. Um, you know, that's something that the board can consider um, in the discussion of updating so, um, subdivision regs with regards to MS4. I think we want to look at it from two perspectives. First of all, from, from a broad view, complying with the overall MS4 and the subdivision right. regs, down the road, look at the low impact stuff. But I don't think to look at the, to look at the low impact stuff and the regulations in general right now for planning yeah. board, we don't have enough time. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, that that's a what what will end up happening, um, especially with regards to the um, stormwater regulations that still need to be refined. Um, the uh, subdivision regs, you'll find that there probably is going to be minimal change, if at all, if if anything, and it might just be citing. Um, a new section of the general bylaw. That might be the changes that the board adopts. Um, so, you know, we can we can discuss that, you know, when we get to that point. And one <laughs> other thing that works into all of this, I said around a few days ago, uh, forwarded an email from David Nixon, which was forwarding an email from uh, that woman from DCR who had been out to see us. Uh, Joy Duperol. Um, DCR is uh, proposing model new floodplain bylaws. And Ken, I just copied you on that. So, Thanks for reminding me. I had that on my notes, um, but it was covered with a piece of paper. Yeah, so um, I just got that today too. The There's new model bylaws for um, floodplain um, overlay districts. Um, so, you know, addressing to ensure that um, you're compliant with that. Obviously, it's specific to the National Flood Insurance Program. Um, you just want to ensure that compliance with that. I think um, firm, the, the new flood insurance rate maps are still being worked on. I don't know if the town has gotten any word um, on that, but in my discussions with other communities, um, firm maps are being updated at the moment, I think by 2023 two or 2023 um the town is going to have some new flood maps um but you also want to ensure that your bylaw um is you know up to up to date with that and i think this is a great time um, to at least start talking about that and it's very topical because there's been a lot of issues about uh people using in some cases overusing riverfront property uh, for their camper, their friend's camper, their friend's friend's camper, and now you got five people there, five separate campers, and you're trying to bring electricity to the site, and a uh, whole bunch of things happening down there. That um, uh, this this is a uh, you know convenient timing for this to come in. I haven't looked at it in detail, but uh, the impression that the person gave from DCR is that. Uh, come spring, they're looking for us to adopt this for the spring at Springtown meeting, and thereafter they're going to be looking more closely at whether towns that are affected have bylaws in place like this. Yeah. Yeah. This. So that's four projects. Now, two of them, the MS four. Um, and probably conform conforming the subdivision regulations to MS4 would be billed off of the um, uh, capital article. Right, the um, town administrator's budget. Right. <clears throat> and the, uh, so you might want to just touch base with David Nixon just to let him know that, uh, well, actually, as of today, there is a new sheriff in town. And David- Carolyn, 
Yes, David is now the uh, uh, associate administrator, the administrator emeritus or something. Um, but, uh, you know, certainly he would still be, a, he'd be the best point person, I think, to be in contact with on that. Who is the yeah. new? The new? Uh, Caroline. Carolyn Brennan. Brennan. She used to be the um, Council on Aging's, uh, the direct, Executive Director of the Council on Aging for the town of East Long Meadow. I was actually in a meeting with her in, in that capacity for the work that I'm doing in East Long Meadow. Um, and she told me, oh yeah, I'm the town of Hadley's new administrator. I said, oh, okay, welcome. <laughs> um, that's great, uh, Bill. So, um, yeah, I guess, you know, I'm, I'm going to be sending this email to um, the board um, or, you know, um, Bill can send it out to the board, which is the, the language that Jim may be pulling from. And I work with Jim to, um, I, to, to draft that language for the um, warrant article for the inclusionary housing payment in lieu of option. Um, and then probably also reach out to you, Jim, to to, to um, coordinate um, Patty Gambarini's work with the Stormwater Committee, um, maybe one more meeting to just revisit the stormwater regulations, refining them. Um, and then, um, you know, and my, my next thing on my plate is um, the Planning Board right, Rules and Regs, um, revisiting the document that Bill gave me, I think a year ago, as well as um, just quickly looking at the subdivision regs to ensure um, that it's compliant with um, the new uh, uh, stormwater bylaw. Sounds like a plan. Um, I, I did want to let you know that I know that um, you spoke about it at your last meeting. I was not present, but I saw it on um, Hadley Media. I did work with Dave Nixon on that grant um, for oh. the um, mass, mass development. It was a real estate technical assistance grant. Yes. Um, Bill's language that he gave um, that's in your master plan was the basis for the, the ask. Um, it was identifying the, um, the uses along the corridor Okay. Um, and specifically Hampshire Mall. Um, I think it was that last section of the economic development chapter in your master plan. Um, so um, Dave did um, submit that. Ken, please don't get us a grant to uh, put a bunch of barriers on Route 9 and make it one way the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> what a bunch of barriers like they have on Route 2 through uh, Athol. On, right. you, you can't cross the center lane. One other thing on the formula, the uh, the other variable is rents. And I got that rent number that I used in the original pro forma I gave you from the Hadley Council on Aging. So that's who we'll rely on for uh, rents of subsidized apartments, okay? Yeah. Okay. Bill, is that on, okay? The, <laughs> on the grants, the grant that Ken's talking about, we got a letter that said we, we you know, I wasn't sure we needed something from town council about because we we do our evidently our manufacturing by right appears to meet the requirements. Right, I'm I am in. I have been talking with town council. Okay, I was going to ask if you were in with them. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> so I did get an inquiry off. They had some follow up questions. I got really busy at the end of last week, but I, that's on my list to get back to. Okay, thank you. But I don't think, as I said, we're not going to try to put a zoning. If we didn't have everything we needed, it's just functionally too hard to get something on for this year. Oh, I, I absolutely agree with that. But I mean, I would just wonder if you had been in talk, talk, yes. you had talk with KP Law on because it appears that our manufacturing by right meets their requirements. Yes. So it's it's close. Uh, there's a little bit of confusion about the, uh, the 70,000 square foot bylaw, which I think only applies to uh, retail um, 
the maximum, the cap, uh, the super Walmart cap, we'll call it. Yeah, that, I, I yeah. thought it only applied to retail. Um, town council wasn't reading it that way. So I have to get back to them to find out what, what the story is there. Okay. Is that specific to green communities designation? Yes. So I have nothing else. You have anything else, Kim? Um, no. Um, I will start working on regulation items. Um, you know, Jim and I will fine tune what needs to be presented for town meeting. Um, but as far as the the next kind of project, it's um, working on those those uh, regulations. Okay. So. As you're working on the inclusionary zoning language, we're not going to be meeting for two weeks and the, we're going to be having our public hearing when, when we do meet. Um, so if you just circulate your drafts, we can't comment back to you, Jim. Right. But if you could circulate your drafts around or just send them to me and I'll pass them around um, just so we're all sort of on the same page as where you're going with it. Okay, yeah, no problem. Yeah. I have nothing else. Anybody have anything? I have a question. Can the planning board do anything uh, regarding the state and their Route 9 development? Uh, first Jane, question, this has been no. tried several times and usually we cannot. It's they basically it's their road. What what uh, what what kind of specific are you looking for, Jane? Um, well, what I'm hearing is um, because of the design, which is one way each way with a turning lane in the center, which our police force calls the suicide lane, as is happens on South Maple Street. Um, they're also taking a large amount of property from various landowners because the, um, in addition to those three traffic lanes, on each side will be a sidewalk and a bicycle lane. That's correct. So the road's going to get really wide. Yep. And that, and then they're having bus pullouts in addition to that. Yep. And I think that's only in certain locations. I don't think that happens the entire length. There's only yes. where they. Oh. It's going They're to trying to get turning traffic out of the lane. No, Mike. I mean, Mike, it's going to happen from the center of Hadley all the way to South Maple Street. Uh, that was not what I understood when I went to the hearing at Hopkins last year, that they were going to put the suicide lane where someone would have a turn. No. One year. Full length. Full length of the road with a sidewalk and a bike lane on each outside. No. It was the state some person in the state higher ups said that they would approve no grants for roads if they didn't do that. So therefore every, the highway, the DOT, I guess, is taking that as a mandate. Every road update must have that look for lack of a better term. And it's not negotiable. Yeah, because at that meeting, Mark, if you remember, we argued that they didn't need the bike lane and the travel lanes, but they were going to put a six foot buffer and a six foot sidewalk on each side, not only on one side, but both sides. Yeah. You got a bike path a hundred yards away in most yeah. cases from this route nine. They said that doesn't matter. Different agency, different budget. <laughs> <laughs> you talk about the left hand and the right hand going at it. This is classic. It reminds me of the rotary across the bridge. And that's some of the same issue that um, <clears throat> you know, we, we don't get a vote in it. Um, there is no, the state does not have to come to us for any permitting. I don't know. I actually looked at those plans. I don't know if you have, they have three different places where they're having crosswalks across the highways. Oh, I, I don't doubt that. Well, when they when we had the presentation, Hopkins, we asked about questions about the rotary in Northampton at the bridge before it had started construction. 
And this group knew nothing about the Rotary to comment on because they said, that's a different group doing that. And they said, well, how do we find out about the Rotary? And they didn't have a good answer for us. It was, it was very, very disturbing. I think that's why they had the public hearing. That's when, that's when they're somewhat listening to feedback. But now that their plan has been paid for and set and done, yeah, I, I, my impression is that we don't have much say now. Our chance to pick these things up was at the public hearing because I, I remember hanging around afterwards after they kind of ended and I just kind of was lingering, listening up at the front desk and I, the front table and I heard someone say, oh, I'm surprised we got the, you know, this new bike friendly scheme through Hadley so easily, you know. Yeah, it, the, it, the problem, it is their new scheme. The problem was the first phase and the second phase, we've been complaining to them and complaining to them about the sidewalk situation. We, the six-foot buffer with the six-foot sidewalk is a reasonable amount of space for snow and a reasonable amount of space to get a, a bigger machine through to plow the sidewalks at some point if we do take them over. But the state, we wanted the state because of what they did and how they built the sidewalks, we wanted them to maintain them. It, it's their sidewalks, not ours. But we're giving them to the town now is what they said. Well, we, we don't want them. It's not ours. You don't want to build them correctly. That's not our fault. We're not maintaining your garbage, you know. That's the way I felt about it through both meetings, through the meeting at District 2 and through the first public hearing we had at Hopkins Cafetorium, and they promised us another uh, informational meeting for all the landowners once they went through with the land taking, and there's tons of complaints about that, and now they went to the 100%, I don't know if you people have seen it or not, but they changed all the entrances to Route 9 off of E Street, off, uh, they didn't change Mill Valley very much, but E Street's a big concern. I don't know if they're taking both of the properties on the corners or not, you know, and they're just not talking to us. I will say as to the, the crosswalks, you know, if, if you only drive, that's a nuisance. But for a lot of people and they're expecting an increased number of people biking, um, that has been a, a sensitive issue to get from the bike path to businesses on Route 9. Um, so I think that was one of the features they were selling, they were pushing that now you can, we have more connectors from the bike path. But yeah, I'm sure that's gonna annoy, you know, people who are primarily just, just driving. And um, on a separate note, but also on Route 9, but not a section that the state's involved with. Uh, last night at the CPA meeting, Chris Okafor talked about uh, going for a grant for a study to make some improvements and restoration on the town commons. And one of the things he threw in there, which I thought was, was interesting, I'd be in interested to see where it goes, was to see if there was some way to design a safer way to get across Route 9 from one side of the commons to the other. Uh, and I just kind of thought, wow, that, that'll that be interesting. They've, I've heard talk several years ago about a rotary there. Mm. The uh, original design for the Route 9 widening from the um, <clears throat> common to the bridge actually had... Uh, a, uh, a double signalized intersection there, kind of like what we have in front of uh, a Big Y on University Drive, where they're a little offset with the nursing home entrance and the Big Y Drive, and they just threw up a four, a four traffic light configuration. And that was in the original design for the, um, the common to the bridge widening, and then that just got dropped. What does everybody think about the double rotary down by Atkins? At where? Down on 116, down by Atkins. Any complaints or any any kudos on the it, the back to back rotary? Okay, rotors? but it's difficult to get a big rig through there. Mm. 
the rotary is does not have a big diameter to it. And I know that the curving is all slanted inward, but try driving an 18 wheeler through there. So one, one anecdote regarding the rotary, there was Senator Aikens from Vermont when he retired as a Senator, asked, they asked him what he was most proud of. And he said that the street in front of my house is not paved. Congressman Over was asked when he retired what he's most proud of, and he says, the two rotaries in front of my house. So kind of a different perspective from two different people. That Atkins rotary only takes about a quarter of the traffic at, at prime time. So, you know, they, they work, but I don't see how that one at the bridge is going to work. They got two lanes funneling off of 91. You got two lanes funneling in off the bridge. I, I don't understand it myself. And you're going to signalize intersection of one of, at the outlet of one of them. I, I see that. Two of them. The, you got the bike path crossing with a signal and you've got the turn on to 91. Yeah, I got a friend that won't drive to Northampton anymore because of that rotary. It scares the hell out of her. A, a well de a well de a well designed rotary is the cat's meow. Emphasis on the well designed. If yeah, that one's gonna the, have to. This had been the the size of the Greenfield rotary. It would have worked beautifully. I mean, we'll we'll see once it's done how it works, but. I mean, New York loves rotaries off of interstates. Get on Route 87 and go up north of Albany. There are some places where you will see, no exaggeration, four or five rotaries in a row, about 100 feet, 100 to 100 yards apart. Well, that, that out doesn't matter. Go Good. <laughs> get out of one, you go into another, especially around exit. Uh, 11 and 12, you'll see some exits 11 and 12 north on 87 in New York. Some places, that, uh, exit 12 has four rotaries in a row going east. You just like one rotary after another. But anyways, my daughter lives up there. That's why I know. <laughs> I was going to say, stop going over there. Yeah. <laughs> I had one other, if we're done with that, I had a question from last night's CPA uh, meeting. There was a question if there are zoning restrictions on what can be done on the commons. No. Okay. It, it, that has always been, uh, the Board of Selectmen have always taken care of that. Okay, thank you. So the business zone extends from Route 9 north to the bike path. So the south end of the North Common is in a business zone for whatever that's worth. And the north end of the South Common, uh, how, how deep is it? 200 feet? 275? 500. Well, uh, it's to Bay Road, but then it cuts back to Bay Road at about... Uh, draws those properties so about 500 feet right there. Okay. On, a, on a, the south end of the common, I think it's 500 feet. So and the north end goes up to the bike path. So theoretically, I suppose they could sell it for business use or something like that. But um, <laughs> uh, as long as it's town owned, it's town property and it can be used for any town purpose. Oh, I don't think, yeah, I got the impression that his study was going to look at maybe some underground utilities for the various events that happen throughout the year and also maybe looking at the P word, parking. <laughs> so, I don't know. You don't really want to open up that conversation, do you? <laughs> uh, exactly. <laughs> Okay, anything else? Move we adjourn. Motion, do we have a second? I'll second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is history. Thank you and thank you, John. Aye.